All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2010 Lexus ISF. Up front is a 5.0 liter V8. Down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now, before I get comments on it, yes, I just reviewed an ISF in the same color, but that was supercharged and that had so much work done to it that it's hard to say if that was even still an ISF. However, this is bone stock. It's a 2010 that has absolutely nothing done to it. So I can finally give my true and honest thoughts about the ISF. So let's get back to that five liter V8. Well, it was designed with Yamaha. They had a hand in designing this engine. And so that's why it revs so well. It really has solid power. And you might be thinking Yamaha, don't they make keyboards and jet skis and ATVs? Yes, they do, but they also help design engines. Back in the 90s, they helped Ford with the Ford Taurus SHO engine. That was partially done by Yamaha. So don't knock it. Don't knock it till you try it. 416 horsepower, 371 foot pounds of torque from the factory, which like I said, this is a completely bone stock ISF. And it's just, the power is just great. It's really, really solid. The torque is there, 371 foot pounds. I mean, I'll give you a little listen here. <laughs> I mean, it's just right there. It drives, it drives like a muscle car. It, it, it's really, really great. And we're in a sedan. I just, I absolutely love it. All right, since you guys complained in the last video, that there's not enough video of me driving it and too much of me talking. Here we go. said paired to it is an eight speed automatic transmission it's so good this this transmission is so good it's not a dual clutch but it feels like one it shifts like one when you hit the paddle boom next gear next gear next gear it's just it's right there when you need it it's absolutely amazing this transmission is like a bumblebee's wings in the fact that technically science says it shouldn't exist and physics says it shouldn't work but somehow it's doing both that's how i feel about this transmission it defies logic it just it works. It's an old 14 year old transmission, but it drives like anything new. I love that. Last but not least, of course, the ISF is rear wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauges. On the left is my speedometer with fuel down at the bottom. And on the right is the tachometer with coolant temperature. Then of course, in between those gauges, I get the outside temperature, what gear I'm in, coolant temperature, battery voltage, and the odometer, which says 42,000 miles. This is a low mileage example of an ISF. Absolutely awesome. 42,000 miles is barely broken in for these engines. On the steering wheel, I do have paddle shifters on the back, which I used in this video. That was a big comment on the last videos that I didn't use the paddle shifters. I'm actually using them now. But on the left, I have my volume controls and mode button. And then on the right, I have my phone options and voice commands. One change from the 2008 ISF that I drove, because this is two years newer, is they made the bottom of the steering wheel blue. Don't know why. I honestly prefer black but it's blue now there you go big changes to the left of me i have my headlight washers and a coin holder as well as my fuel door and trunk release and then on the door i have three different memory seat options my power windows power mirrors and power locks moving on to the center we have two climate control vents and then we have a infotainment screen from lexus now another difference from the 2008 that i drove is that now this bezel is black I like it. I think it looks sleek. I, I honestly, I'm not partial to either the silver or the black. I think they both look respectively well in their own way. It doesn't really affect me that much. I think black 
does sort of make it look a little bit more regular per se. But what I don't like about this is that some of the climate controls are in the screen and I'd rather that they had a button. The fan controls are in the screen. So on this very hot day, it's 10 a.m. and it's 85 degrees outside. So you know it's gonna be a hot one. I could not find the fan controls for a little while. They're in the screen, not on the button. But speaking of the buttons, I do have my climate control buttons directly below that radio, which are very, very nice. And then I have my radio, very standard Lexus radio here. Nothing really too crazy has a CD player, AM, FM, satellite, disc, aux, or USB input, which for 2010, a USB input is very, very nice. Down below that, I do have a little ashtray with cigarette lighter. I do have heated seat options. There are little dials. This is a very much a parts bin Toyota part. I think every Toyota with heated seats either has this or a switch, which is found in the Prius. Then we have the shifter. Speaking of Toyota parts bin parts, the shifter is out of every other Toyota product ever made. Uh, someone gave me crap in the last video, like, oh, it's stop saying Toyota parts. This is a Toyota part. Go into a 2004 Toyota Camry. You will find this exact same shifter. I'm just saying. Then I do have a flip out cup holder below the shifter. I really like that. Makes me feel cool and special. Now the seats are nice and comfortable. They do have a decently high bolsters. Like I said, heated power memory. I mean, it has the works, you know, it, it, this is a very comfortable seat and this is a nice luxury vehicle seat. But speaking of seats, we will do a back seat review yet again. All right, so we're in the back of the 2010 Lexus ISF. Now, one of you commented in the last ISF back seat review that the back seat was designed ergonomically and was very well thought through. Well. It wasn't. This back seat sucks. I'm very crammed. This is my driving position. This is how I would normally drive the car. My knees are smashed. My head is almost hitting the ceiling. I'm 5'11 and I get it. I'm not the smallest person in the world. But who is this ergonomic for? A, a chickpea? Huh? I don't get a middle seat. So really this thing's a two plus two. I get a center console, flip out cup holders. I like the S4 badges on the seat as you get in. That's cool. But this is a shorter chassis car than the GS or LS or something like that. So the back seat suffers. You have back seats, yes, but am I gonna be comfortable back here? No, I'm smashed like a sardine. Just not good. Now we have to talk about the looks. Now this is where it starts to get dramatically different from the last ISF that I drove because that had a lot of visual modifications done to it. This is completely stock. This is what the ISF looked like when it rolled off the showroom floor. It's not a bad looking car. I wanna get that out there. I don't think it's an ugly or a bad looking car. However, it doesn't look special. It doesn't feel special. There's nothing cool or interesting about this. My friend Glenn has a Lexus IS250 that he's driven into like three trees or whatever. But anyway, he has a Lexus IS250. This looks identical to that. I mean, Spot the difference. It's like one of those books you used to get at the Scholastic Book Fair or, or in a dentist's office. I forget the name of them. Shoot, man, if I find a picture of it, I'll put it up on the screen. But it's like those spot the difference things. You're supposed to like circle it like, oh, the boot only has two shoelaces. Spot the difference with these two. Okay, the exhaust tips, but like this looks too normal. It looks too mundane. And that's the last talking point that I, I finally understand why the ISF didn't sell as well because it's not different enough. I don't feel special looking at it, driving it. I love the power. You know, I think honestly the 416, instead of the 600 horsepower monster that I drove, I think I'm actually kind of more happy with the 416 because it's a lot more comfortable for me. I can sort of mess around with it and have fun with it. And I have a lot more confidence in the lower horsepower. Now that's just me. If I were to own one of these, hell yeah, I'd supercharge it. Of course, I would want 700 horsepower, of course, but being a car reviewer, this is not my personal vehicle. I'm more comfortable driving this amount of power. It has enough power to get out of its own way and have fun and sound good, but not enough power to kill me. It's a happy medium. And honestly, that's sort of how I feel about the rest of the ISF is that it's almost sort of a master of none, a, a bone stock ISF that is, because it's fast, but it's not the fastest thing in the world. It's luxurious, but not the most luxurious in the world. It looks good, but not the best in the world. What what makes this car special? What's what's that tick? What's that just something to push it over the edge? It's, it's a V8 sedan. It's a fun V8 sedan, but that's it. I love ISFs. I really, really do. I love this car. I just understand why it didn't sell that well. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Nick for getting me this car to review on such short notice. 
You guys loved the supercharged ISF review, and so I hope you guys enjoyed this review as well. If you haven't seen my supercharged review, go check that out because that is that is that's everything the ISF should have been. It should have been aggressive. It should have had more power. But this this is what the ISF is. Take that as you will. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. If you really like to take care, guys.